Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, a warm welcome unto all of you from your pastor, Yeti. I will follow you, O oh God, embracing him as Lord in your private worship. And for today, it is depending on him through others. One area of life where we're likely to realize our lack of independence on self-sufficiency is in our relationships with other people. All of us, at least if we are honest with ourselves, regularly encounter situations where we're dependent on, dependent on the decisions or actions of someone else. These decisions or actions vary from the most routine and ordinary to ones affecting our future career or well-being. A PhD candidate became a Christian in the midst of his doctoral studies. For that reason, a previously supportive but ungodly professor tried to block the granting of his degree. The student was seemingly at his mercy. Between these uh, specific events, my very minor urgency and the graduate student's career threatening crisis lies a vast number of situations in each of our lives where we depend on other people. You may think I deal in trivial matters when I refer to such minor events as a doctor's appointment or the student that became a Christian. One reason I do is because this is where we mostly live. Most of life is commonplace and ordinary. The PhD candidate faced his degree crisis once, but a dozen times in his life he might need a doctor's appointment on short notice. He along with each of us needs to learn where as dependent on God in the mundane events of life as we are in the extraordinary ones. And furthermore, it's often easier to recognize our dependence on God in the major events than in the minor ones. A potentially life-changing crisis stands out in bold relief and immediately draws our attention to our dependence on Him. The more ordinary experiences tends to slip by without that recognition. Instead, we are inclined to depend on ourselves and other people in these situations. The person who fears and follows God, however, rejoices in the fact that we actually are not dependent on another people. We are dependent on God. The Bible consistently affirms that God is able to and does, in fact, carry out his plans through the decisions of people. My favorite passage of scripture on this subject is Proverbs 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course wherever he pleases. If the heart of the most powerful monarch is in God's hands, then surely the decisions of doctors, receptionists, and graduate school professors, and lots more other people are also subject to his control. This truth does not nullify the freedom people have in their choices, nor does it reduce our responsibility to act prudently and discreetly when we are, humanly speaking, depend on the decisions and actions of others. God works through people's wills, not against them, so that they freely make the choices he wants them to make. How God does this is, of course, a mystery. This is a part of God 
that he has not revealed to us. Nevertheless, it's a fact that God teaches us over and over in the Bible. And see, for example, Exodus 12, 35 to 36, Ezra chapter 1, verse 1, Isaiah 45, 13, Daniel 1, 9, and 2 Corinthians 8, 16 to 17. What is our responsibility to influence the decisions or actions of others? We can act presumptuously here in either of two opposite directions. One is to assume God is not in control, so that we rely totally on our efforts and our ability to influence others. And the other extreme is to think that since God is in control, we need do nothing. But the wise course is to take all the steps we can take in a biblical manner, and then to trust God for whatever the outcome may be. The extent of our reverential awe toward God will largely determine how well we are able to steer the proper course between the two extremes. Well, I gave you a lot to think about. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father. That the hearts of everyone around me, all those who influence and impact my life, are always truly in your hands. Whether or not they love you or recognize your sovereignty, I trust in you and put my hope in you, not in people. O God of hope, fill me with all joy and peace as I trust in you so that I might overflow with hope by the power of your Spirit. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. For myself and for all who are your children, I praise you that in your unfailing love you will be the people you have redeemed. I rejoice in your perfect control of all circumstances, including all the nations of others around me and every detail of my life. Many, O oh Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you plan for us, no one can recount to you. Were I to speak and tell of them, they will be too many. To declare. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.